Hello and welcome to the SM Buzz Show. I'm joined by his royal book writer, Jeremy Waite. Nice to, nice to see you. How's it going? Um, it's going very well, thank you. Thank you for my refreshing cup of tea. Fresh cup of tea there. So just a cup of tea. There's nothing, anything you else to be looked at. have a biscuit pocket with no biscuit in it. This is the official SM Buzz chat cup now. You can put a biscuit in there, so my tea will now help melt the biscuit first. So we just finished the actual chat. How did you find it? Like, give us 30 seconds of how you found your first SM Buzz chat. People are feisty, man. Oh, what? <laughs> people, like social media, people are so precious about it. I forget because I haven't done many social chats for a while. And people are just so precious about social and the way that you should treat it. And it's like, it's this little precious thing that we've got to be really careful with. And, and I kind of take the corporate route too often. Like, yeah. we've got to make money, we've got to do better customer service. People, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. We've got to talk about brands and engagement and likes and eyeballs and stuff. And I'm like, really, are we still doing that? You push people quite hard this evening, which we'll come to a bit later on the show as we, you know, we recap what was said on the chat this evening. It was a good chat, though. Wasn't it? It, was it was a good, good chat. chat. Um, as always, I'll go um, a few times. I'll probably say like too much and show my Birmingham roots. But the first question I'm going to ask you, and it's a question that we ask every guest. Go on. How did you get started in social media? Tell us your yarn. Oh my goodness, we haven't got long enough for the full story. You've got two minutes, two and a half minutes at a stretch. I did maths and theology at college. Oof. Um, never wanted to go into the church or anything like that. Just love people, love numbers. Okay. Um, and when social happened and I just saw this thing where you've got people were behaving in a new way and sharing tons of stuff. And this is like back early with Napster, right? That I see Napster and Scour as like the first social networks where people first shared a file, like a movie or a music, you know, something that they're emotional about. And was like, there's something weird going on with these tribes of people doing stuff, but then you need all the maths behind it to figure out where they've gone, why they've gone that way, the network effects of stuff. So I just started to write about it. I just thought it was fun, just to have a little bit of a laugh, you know. Started blogging about it, um, ended up writing a book, Sex, Brands and Rock and Roll, ended up being one of the first heads of social in Europe. How did you... Phones for you and went on from there. Like the book, how did you write it? Where did it all come from? So, so this was a thing, right? So I was, uh, I had no money, like a lot of the guys watching probably, you know, social media agencies, social media consultants, you haven't got the money to pay for search and display and SEO and go and compete with everyone else. And neither did I at the time, right? So I was thinking, well, what if I could just try and write content that might be trending? But we can't predict what's going to trend, right? So somebody in a bar told me this ridiculous thing that turned out to be true. They just said, if you were to go on bbc.co.uk slash on this day, right? The site still exists. And the basic premise was, if it's a really slow news day, like, Nobody's died, no big things happen, there's no sports events. They always end, don't they, on that thing like, this is the anniversary of... Anniversary of something that's happened Princess at some Princess Diana's point. just died or whatever the thing is. So I started to schedule a blog post every day, a week in advance, based upon what that thing was. And it took about five months of nothing happening. And then one day, I wrote a blog post about Gianni Versace on the anniversary that he died, and it was 19 things brands can learn from Versace. And I was trending above Versace on Google. I got... Ended up wow. with a couple of hundred thousand subscribers on my blog. I wrote something about The Apprentice. You remember Stuart Bagshaw, the brand? Yep. You know, I'm not a one-trick pony. I'm a herd of ponies flying to us. Herd of pony. Bless him, God rest his soul. Um, and I was number one on The Apprentice website for a while. And it was just, and that thing just kind of took off. It was like when you write something and you want nothing in return, you just want to write something that's fun. Yeah. And trying to make sense of something in the world or a celebrity thing or Tiger Woods and his porn stars, but you're telling that through the eyes of a marketer. People like that because you've got an angle and it was something that felt authentic. So I just started to blog a lot about that, ended up being turned into a book. And back in the days before social even existed, it's like, how do you recruit for a head of social when you don't even know what one does? Well, yeah. here's somebody that might love numbers, loves people and networks, and they can write about stories in a way that general people and the public and especially youth can understand. You mentioned the blogging part. 
Yeah. What's your one tip to give to anyone, like any social media professionals, not just wanting to do well, but wanting to get ahead in the game? You did well, you did, you used BBC on this day, you utilised it perfectly. What would your one tip be? Man, that's a tough question. That's a good question. I told you about it in advance. You've had enough time. But I still, there's a big question. Do you know what? I think there's a confidence issue with most people that work in social. And I mean that respectfully, right? Most people that I come across have something amazing to say or a really interesting viewpoint on the world. But a lot of the time, because people are junior, they've not been in, it, in the industry long enough, the industry's not really that mature anyway. That there's a confidence issue that people don't realize they've actually got a really unique angle on stuff that's going on, right? So like my piece of advice would be, first of all, there's a confidence issue that you have a voice and a platform that previous generations have never had. And the second one is just like, once you've taken that, like find your thing, like what's that one thing that you are super, super passionate about? Look in the early days of Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Like friend just doing amazing stuff, you know, killed it. 60 million brand built in four years with no advertising. He was just like a wine guy in jeans and a t-shirt. And he's like, I'm gonna do a video blog every day. No one's done one before. I'm gonna shout and swear and talk about sports. But that was his one thing. He was passionate about wine and he was passionate about people. And all the people that we see now that are doing amazing stuff in social, they found their one little thing and their just niche. put- Yeah. And they've done it. And you know what the problem is? Everybody thinks that they need to reinvent or build something brand new. Like, here's this thing that no one's seen before. And I really like the attitude of, this isn't about like stealing other people's content and inventing something new. This is like the best social media people are DJs. Ooh. Because well, they're like taking that. all the stuff that already exists and they're re-spinning it in a way that they're now putting a different flavor on it, right? Um, and they're taking that to an audience that would have never got that before. Your metaphor on the DJing has just blown me away. Right, we need to get to what we were talking about during the chat. We had four amazing questions that Jeremy set out. And basically, we wanted to know what the community thought about certain aspects of, you know, just about social media and the future of social media over the next 18 months. Because Jeremy came out and said, over the next 18 months, social media progressed more than it has in the past 10 years. So, one of the questions you put together, we had an hour's brainstorming session, probably like two hours actually, was how... Glass of tea. Glass of tea. How can social media get the respect it deserves? And we're going to show the tweets along the bottom, as we always do, as is tradition. Your response, first of all, was make marketing so good that finance, legal, ops, sales and IT want to get involved. Yeah. That was yours. And then Ruby Love replied with, it just takes time. Some of those who don't get it can actually see the results firsthand. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that's instant. I'll get to like, yeah. I'll ask you like, your answer to these questions in a second. And then Ben Titchmarsh said, by coming of age as a proper results driven medium and by not acting like a mental shouty person as an industry. <laughs> it's a good comparison to be fair. It's up there with our DJ one from earlier. And finally, I'm just going to squeeze another one in. Andy Yokes, MD of the drum, decided to get involved from his, from his five-story house in Escher. Move away from the first-gen social media types and the awesome self-importance that they showed. Next-gen are so much brighter. So we had Ruby's, Ben's and Andy's thoughts on this. And we also had yours to start with. You've got one and a half minutes to completely explain how can social media get the respect it deserves? My gosh, we best make this good um, in case you may not have a job after this. And Probably won't. Saying lovely things about... Do you know, I spend a lot of my time in a corporate world um, and I've come from social when it felt very much like a little bubble. Um, and it was a beautiful bubble and it's a really nice comfy bubble, but it's, it's really difficult when you're so stuck in the social media world to see outside of that. So when I went to Salesforce, I started going into boardrooms looking at what social does and how it impacts the wider business. And you start to realize that social media, as big and as beautiful as it is, is just this tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of overall media spend, ad spend, you know, business operations. 
and, and it hasn't got the respect it deserves. I mean, yeah. we look at Red Bull and Coca-Cola and Starbucks and Disney and stuff, and they do awesome stuff. But even in those businesses, you look at the amount of money that's spent on social compared to everything else, and it's tiny. Where social wins, and this is where social media managers need to try and become a little bit more corporate and business-like, God forbid, uh, is. not going to do very well. And this isn't just saying this is about ROI and this isn't attaching NPS to everything, but figure out a way that makes social media attractive to legal, operations, finance, HR, all those guys. If you can add value to their departments and their lives, you're going to get more headcount, more budget to do more cool stuff, to get advertised more, to reach more customers, to et cetera, et cetera. So it's like it should be marketing that attracts non-marketing people. That's the win for me. I think. Perfect conclusion. Marketing that will attract non-marketing people. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Give you a good handshake. Um, as always, we have a question that we ask to people online and to comment with the YouTubes. Oh, the comment on the YouTubes? Who am I? Taking in plurals. The question this week is, should brands, agencies, marketeers always jump on the next big thing? I know your response to this, and if anybody wants to go through the SM Buzz chat, you can see Jared, no, you, you can't, you can't mime no. These people need to respond, so if you respond in the comments below, that would be marvelously helpful. So thank you again to Jeremy Waite from coming all the way in from Salesforce, uh, Jamie McMurray, who's behind the camera, and Gillian West, who is the social media manager at The Drum. Also, thank you to Stephen Lepetak, who stood behind the camera. He's waving right now. He, he wants to run around, but he's not. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next week, I guess. What do you want me to, what? Cheers. Cheers. He wants me to... Pleasure. Getting directed. Biscuit. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs>